Goodness, Austin Reed. Austin Reed pass! <laughs> the primal yell. There he is. He's been in the league for three years. You know him. You love him. Coming off a championship weekend in Las Vegas. Austin Reeves, first of all, I know you're still like a little bit under the weather um, and that this was your flu game. And LeBron did put it to the press and everyone that was within hearing. Better flu game, MJ or Austin Reeves. Where are we on this? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, everybody takes Braun a little too serious. <laughs> I love it. I just think being even in the conversation is kind of funny to me. But because you were ill, were you able to? I mean, it's Las Vegas. Did you celebrate? Did you say, I'll, I'll deal with it next week? Like, what'd we do here? No, that, right after the game, I went straight to the hotel, went and got in bed. Um, my family stopped by for like 15 <laughs> minutes, but I was struggling. Man. Damn. So we're giving the edge to MJ, because MJ would have went right back out. <laughs> yeah. what, a, what a bummer. Fair enough. What a bummer. Um, Austin, there's been a lot of talk about whether there should be a banner raised for this in-season tournament championship. Would you guys, what, what, what do you say? Would you raise a banner at Crypto.com Arena? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it, the Lakers are so used to winning championships, uh, like actual championships that, um, I don't think we'll raise a banner, um, but uh, you know what it is, the first time for you know anybody to win that tournament, um, so that's special. So regardless if we do or don't, um, you know, I'll be happy, but you know, hopefully we can you know raise like a real championship banner this year. You got to tell me for that for for your you guys group and having the star power that you guys have. What was what was you guys' incentive? Was it the the five hundred k, or did you guys <laughs> just want to go out and say? We want to win this thing. What, what was your guys' incentive? I think it was a little bit of everything. Um, and I think that, you know, what Bron said after the game was, um, you know, real. Uh, when he said that, you know, being, you know, records will be broke, all that. But being the first to do something, you know, that'll never be broke. That's something that'll stand forever. So I think that was really the main thing because, you know, to be honest, it was 500K to, you know, Bron. You know, he's got all that money. <laughs> Uh, so I think it was really just being the first to do something like that. I think I think the visual was kind of fun. It was fun as a fan to watch a basketball game where you knew that like there was an actual money amount on the line and it was for everybody. Like that just felt different, I think, for us watching. I loved afterwards when LeBron was like, the young guys were, hey, when when do you think we'll get our money? Um, by the yeah. way, great question. I'd want to know the answer too. Like. Did they get any of it to celebrate in Vegas with? Because Lou said none of that's leaving Vegas if it was him. I'd have left all mine in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going home with that. That's funny. Uh, I don't think, honestly, I still don't know the answer to that question. Uh, someone <laughs> told me at the latest we'd get it uh, January 15th. Oh. But I don't know. No, I don't think anybody's got any of their money yet. But, um, you know, the, all the young guys were running around, you know, even before the game, like, please win, please win. Uh, <laughs> two ways were... Uh, like, this is a $150,000 game for us. We need, we need y'all to win. So uh, I don't know when we get the money, but, you know, those guys are super excited. Austin, you mentioned that 500 k that you would possibly use that for a Riviera membership, I think mm. you said. Uh, you realize you got a bag this summer and you can already afford the Riviera <laughs> membership, right? Hey, yeah, I mean, I just, I, I, don't, I don't really like to spend my money. Uh, you know, I don't really have it. I didn't have any before now. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I've kind of <laughs> realized that this is just, you know, a little, uh, you know, extra. I told you, I get you out to Sherwood whenever you want, bro. And uh, so have you played with any of the other golfers? Like, have you played with Steph? Are you the best golfer in the NBA right now? I haven't played with, with Steph uh nor anybody else in the NBA. I don't really know anybody uh, personally, but uh, for me, I, I mean, I believe so. Um, what yeah, is your I'm, handicap? Uh, I'm scratch. Oh, dear. How, I'm does that make you, how does that make you feel? I'm getting a solid 10 strokes <laughs> off you, <laughs> boss. Hey. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, you I'm, let me know when and where. All right, I got you. And I, I just saw also Charles Barkley is trying to challenge you to a match. <laughs> How bad will you bust his ass? Um, he said he needed four on the front and four on the back. Uh, <laughs> that ain't enough. Well, that's not enough. <laughs> that ain't enough. <laughs> that's not enough. I haven't seen his swing in a couple years, so uh, the last time I remember, he had that the horrible hitch in it. So, First. Um, 
Yeah, I still like my odds regardless. His hitch is so bad, I feel like you have to try to have yeah, that hitch. Got like, it's that, it's that it, bad. It, 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 it looks he says he fixed it. He says he fixed mm, the yips. The yips. All right, Hillbilly Kobe. Um, Chandler is offended by that nickname. <laughs> Where did it come from? Do you love it? How, how do you feel about it? I actually like it. Um, it was when I was at OU, one of my GAs that I was really close with come up to me and was like, I figured it out. And I was like, what, <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? And he was like, he'll build it. Like he was kind of whispering to me because we were in the middle of practice. <laughs> Coach was probably talking, but he was like, he'll Billy Kobe. And I, I just started laughing. I was like, yeah, whatever. But one of my teammates heard it and it basically just ran with it from there. Um, and then it just kind of, you know, caught wind and everybody started using it. And then when I got, um, when I went undrafted and then signed with the Lakers, um, you know, it actually become a thing. See, Chandler, mm -hmm. not offended. Good. Everyone's so offended <laughs> by everything these days. I'm glad you're not. <laughs> also, you just signed a new deal with uh, Chinese uh, shoe company Rigor. Uh, you're now a shareholder, uh, part owner in the company. What made Rigor the right brand for you? What led you to this decision? And then now being a part owner, like what goes into that for you? Yeah, I mean, we first off, we signed the two year deal uh, before last year um, and was just seeing, you know, what the partnership could be. And then after a year of, um, you know, work together, you know, becoming, you know, close friends and, you know, just putting our brains together, we've seen, you know, a special opportunity to create something great. And I think, um, you know, going that direction of, you know, actually joining the, the organization and trying to make it great and build it um, was the best opportunity for us to, um, like I said, do something great. The shoes are great. You know, they've done everything that I've asked for them to do. And, you know, we're looking forward to, you know, keep building that relationship and hopefully, you know, growing something special. Austin, I, I just saw those shoes had U Team USA colors. Are you, are you, is that for Team USA? Are you, like, are you trying to be on, on the Olympic team? Where do you, where do you stand on this? If, like I said, I think a couple of months ago, if they called and asked me, I'd be the first one to say yes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if not, I understand. Uh, but <laughs> I would, uh, definitely would love to. What was that moment like for you, literally, everything you've been through, lacing up your own signature shoe for the first time? Oh, uh, it was special. I mean, if you would have told me, you know, even two years ago that, you know, I would have an opportunity to have my you know, own signature shoe, I probably would have looked at you crazy. Um, so the first time getting them, um, you know, shipped in and, and put on and, uh, actually going and hooping in them uh, in front of a crowd that everybody could see, you know, it was special. You know, it brought back a lot of, you know, memories of, you know, all the hard work that I've put in to get to this spot. AR, you were a free agent this past offseason. You re with the Lakers four years, $56 million deal. What went into your decision? What other options did you have? Um, and going back to Lakers, I know you wanted to be in L.A., but what went into your decision to go back? The main thing was just, being in a spot where I was comfortable, um, you know, coming off a really good, you know, end of the year last year in LA and we made a push to, you know, the Western Conference Finals and obviously got upset by, or not upset, got swept by Denver. Um, you know, like I said, I wanted to be somewhere where I felt comfortable. I knew, you know, kind of what um, was gonna be asking me. And <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> sorry. sorry, I'm still going through it. Um, uh, you know, I was trying, still trying to, you know, figure out, you know, the money situation and all that. But um, at the end of the day, I was restricted, so it kind of made it a little more difficult. And you know, LA did a really good job of um, putting out there that they were going to match everything. So teams were kind of uh, reluctant to, you know, tie up their money um, before the what's that the call bef between the first more and the time. sixth? Hmm. Yeah. So. Um, at the end of the day, I wanted to be back in L.A. Like I said, I wanted to be somewhere where I was super comfortable and knew what was going to be asking me and obviously, um, you know, have an opportunity to compete for a championship. Austin, LeBron has praised, you know, your basketball IQ, the way you see the floor, everything. Uh, how nuts is that? As a, I know I'm 35 <laughs> years old. He, he was, he's my guy growing up. He must have been a huge sure. fan growing up. Like how, how weird and how crazy and surreal is that that – First of all, that you're playing with him and that he loves your game and loves playing with you. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy uh, the fact that he's still playing, to be honest. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, it never it it never gets old, honestly. Like, any time you have a guy of that caliber that knows the game that well, um, you know, it speaks highly about you. You know, it feels good and it empowers you. Um, but one thing I can say, obviously, and I know everybody knows that he makes my life uh, a lot easier. Um, just, you know, the way he sees the game, um, the way he's unselfish and, you know, believes in his teammates and gives them, you know, free reigns to have opportunity to, you know, have their imprint on game, you know, as special. And, you know, growing up, I was a huge Kobe fan, so I wasn't uh, the biggest Brown fan <laughs> until probably like 2000, probably 17, 18. I just one day was like, man, this, <laughs> I got to stop, you know, I got to stop hating this man. It's great. <laughs> um, you know, I think I was just sitting there watching a regular season game in my dorm uh, or in my um, apartment when I was at OU. And I was just like, man, you know, we'll probably never see anything like this again. So let me just appreciate it. And then it comes full circle that I'm teammates with the man and you know you can't beat him as a human uh, always in a good mood so you know he's uh you know, i owe him a lot for my my career so far is there is there one piece of advice that stuck out to you that lebron has given you that's really helped uh it was really just my first year um you know my main thing when i first got here is i was like i'm gonna earn him an 80s respect like regardless of what i gotta do um, in practice, outside of practice, like I've earned their respect. And there was obviously a couple times my first year where you know, I would, I don't want to say defer to him because obviously I should at that point. Uh, but there was a couple times I probably made the wrong play trying to give them the ball. And uh, both of them come up to me and was like, look, you don't have to do that. You can, you know, you can be you. And from you know, that day forward, like, that gave me so much confidence to just be me and um, constantly just do, you know, the right things and uh, really just be myself. All right, Austin, I got to go back to 2000. Now that you've said it, the 2017, you're sort of like, all right, maybe I don't have to hate LeBron anymore. And then fast forward, <laughs> you're playing on the team with him. So how surreal is that? I'm assuming you guys have, like, a text thread. Do you, do you save him as LeBron? Does he have, like, a secret code? In your, like, the whole thing kind of blows my mind that fast forward and now you are playing with him. And not just on the same team, but, like, there's a mutual respect and you have a huge role. How has that been? Oh, it's been crazy. Uh, anytime I go back home, uh, you know, I'll, obviously everybody's first question is, how's LeBron? Like, <laughs> How's LeBron as a human? You know, does he treat you good? You know, just because you know he he's um, you know this such a big superstar that you regular people don't understand that he's just a normal person. You know, he acts like he's about 18 years old. He's always joking, laughing, um, having a good time. So it it is surreal, uh, especially when I go back home and people put it in perspective of you know who he actually is, like, obviously I know, but, um, you know, I spend so much time with him that, you know, to me, he's kind of just a, another human. And uh, that's crazy to say just because, you know, five, six years ago, I was thinking the same way that everybody else was thinking. So, um, you know, shout out to him because, you know, if anybody could be, you know, standoffish or, you know, a little bit different, you know, just because, you know, their their stature is so good, it could be him, but he's not, you know, he's just a, a regular guy that, you know, always wants to have fun. Um, I don't know if you do this with your friends. Like, in my phone, I have Lou as NBA legend, Lou Will. I have Chandler as horse's ass, which is, I think, like a cute code name. Do you do anything like that for LeBron and company? No, nah, his name in my phone is just LeBron. <laughs> just Le you don't need a name? It's perfect. <laughs> Sure. I'm looking at you. I thought I, you were I, 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 I was waiting to see what you have me on, but oh, no. it's all it's all good. Oh, my God. I'm probably just, just my number. Shams. Horses my ass, number. Huh? Horses probably ass, not yeah. even saved. I only know one Shams, and there's only one LeBron. I feel like you guys are golden. I'll take that. Um, <laughs> Austin, so you begin the season as a starter. Now you're coming off the bench. You're the six, essentially the sixth man. What was your initial reaction to that move? Um, how do you feel like you've embraced uh, the changing of roles that you've had over the years? Uh, I feel like I'm, I've embraced it well. Um, you know, my parents' whole thing growing up was, 
you know, the coach is the coach, respect his decisions and, you know, figure out how to be um, successful around that. And me and Darvin had a conversation in Phoenix uh, the night before we played Phoenix in the first, you know, in-season game, uh, the game that I, you know, come off the bench for the first time this year. And, you know, he laid it out, uh, he laid it out uh, all out on the line for me and was like, this is why, you know, we were beat up at that time. Um, and we needed, you know, you know, more pinch scoring, but, you know, more or better, you know, plus minus, you know, as well as when Brown was off the floor. So you know, I respected that and, you know, bought into it because at the end of the day, all I want to do is win. Um, <clears throat> former teammate Pat Beverly was on the show not that long ago, uh, and we asked him about the too small celebration. You hit him with that last season in Chicago. Then a few weeks ago in Philly, you guys had a moment, and then afterward he said, every time I see the Lakers until I retire, whatever team Austin Reeves is on, I'm on his ass. Uh, what was your reaction to that? I laughed. Um, <laughs> I like Pat. Uh, I genuinely, you know, Pat was here for, um, I don't even know, half a season, a little more. And, you know, me and Pat got along really well. He's super competitor. And I believe, you know, after that, you know, too small, they asked him about it. And he was like, I love it. You know, it's it's competition and that's what the game needs. Um, so after the, the one in Philly, you know, everybody was sending it to me. It was like, is he serious? Like, I was like, to be honest, I don't know. Like. <laughs> He, he probably, you know, in a sense, is serious. Like, uh, you know, stuff like that probably sticks with him just because he probably has to find things to, you know, still motivate him because, you know, he's been in the league for a while. Um, but me and Pat, I mean, I believe have, a, you know, mutual respect for one another. And at the end of the day, it's just competition uh, we were talking about. Uh, we were talking to each other at halftime. And I, I said something to him because he said something about me on his pod, uh, you know, having my back. I was like, yo, appreciate it, bro. And he was like, you know, I'm your biggest supporter. Like, uh, keep going, basically. And then all that happens and everybody's like sending it to me, like I said. So um, there's so much more that goes on than everybody sees. <laughs> Hey, he's not forgetting that anytime soon, though. Knowing that, knowing that animal, he's, <laughs> he's not, not letting it go. <laughs> he's not letting it go. But also, last season, you uh, you had the legendary "I'm Him" uh, to my beloved Memphis crowd. Oh, uh, were you just waiting on the right moment for that, or you know, how did that come about? Uh, it was just straight adrenaline. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't ever when I when I'm playing the game, all I can think about is the game. I don't think about you know, celebrations, you know, anything I'm going to say, everything I say is, is pure to, you know, me just being caught up in the moment of the game. And you know, it was a situation where I had a really good fourth quarter um, and obviously a big, you know, game one in Memphis against a really good team. Um, you know, I knew probably over 100 people, you know, in attendance because it's like an hour 45 from where I grew up. So, uh, pure emotion and, you know, joy, honestly. Austin, you were also one of the best players on Team USA this past summer. You had a freeze celebration um, hmm. when you were shooting, you know, making threes on Team USA. Is it true that Steve Kerr outlawed that? Did he ban that? <laughs> <laughs> he tried to. He tried to. Um, so I started to try to get everybody else on the team to do it as well. Um, I remember... It was very early in the, the USA stuff, and I was just messing around in practice, and I, I hit a three um, just shooting around, and I did it. And, and Kurt looks at me and was just like, no. Or I've seen this too much the past you know month and a half or so. He was like, we can't do this um, for the next couple of months, or I'm going to go crazy. <laughs> like I said, so I, I continued to try to get Mikhail, Cam, you know, all those guys to do it with me. And you know it was all just a big run to joke. Hey, are you become quite a celebrity in LA? And I've I play for the Clippers and I've played for the Lakers, and it's definitely two different vibes when you play um, for both of those groups. What are some of the perks playing with the Lakers? I mean, you know, it's it's the Lakers. Um, it's just a. I mean, I believe I haven't played for the Clippers, um, but I think it's just a different, you know, feeling. Um, I think that, you know, it's. I mean, it's just a Lakers town. It's a Lakers city. Um, if you play for the Lakers, regardless, you know, B 
big big dog Braun, or you know you can go down the list i believe everybody's gonna know you wherever you go um you're gonna you know be recognized more um but for me you know i stay in the crib so uh i don't have to deal with all that but i think it's just a different feel like i said austin there were some stories last year about you and uh taylor swift from my boy yeah. trav swooped it up Is it <laughs> There was, uh, Good for him. Yeah. Well, obviously, there was no truth to that, but what was your initial reaction to that? Was it crazy? And are you single? What the? What? Oh, what? <laughs> I'm going rogue. What's happening? We got to right put now? my boy on. <laughs> He's in so LA. He's a star of LA. Come on, let's get him out there. Yeah. yeah. I'm, not, I'm not single. Um, there you go. There you go. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm locked down. <laughs> and my first initial reaction was like, I was, I was back home in Arkansas. I was playing cards with my friends and one of my friends sent it to me and I was just like, are you serious? Like <laughs> as much as I try to stay out of the media, out the way, um, you know, it's it's almost impossible um, to do that. You know, that goes back to Lou's question about, you know, being a Laker, you know, anytime, you know, something like this happens, you know, um, you know, they try to attach names to, you know, people um, just because you're a Laker. Um, but you know, as much as I, like I said, as much as I try to stay out of the media, uh, I was just like, ah, here's another one. <laughs> also, could you and Taylor Swift even be in a bar and not, like, yeah, I like, couldn't even imagine. I, that was what the report was, that they right, were in together a in a bar. Like, I couldn't <laughs> even, like, video? Like, like, knowing how, how famous you two are in your respective rights, like, I, you know, obviously her. But knowing how famous she is. Uh, she, <laughs> she's going to be in a bar. No. I don't know. Have you, yeah. ever, have you ever been out and about and somebody's like, you're not a Laker. Like you had to like prove it to somebody. Oh no! The, the, I'll tell y'all even even worse. Um, <laughs> we were in we were in Brooklyn. Uh, I don't know if it was my rookie year last year, and I was injured at the time. So before the game, I was getting treatment, and it it went you know a little bit into the first quarter, maybe the second quarter, and uh, so I jumped in the shower and put on my clothes, and I was walking out to the bench. And right before I got to the bench, uh, I was about to sit down. Security, like, grabbed me. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, well, what are, what are you doing? And the first person I seen was 80. 80 bust out laughing. was like, yo, he's, he's a player. He's I was awesome. just, shit. So I've gotten that a couple times. I actually, my rookie year, going into crypto, you know, you go down the uh, or staples, you go down the uh, the ramp, Um I was dropped off at the top a couple of times because I didn't have a car yet. And I was just trying to walk through to go down the, the ramp and they would stop me and be like, uh, what, what's your credentials? Like, you work for the team. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Pros and cons yeah. of being a white guy in yeah, the NBA. It's awesome. racial, Austin. Get used to it's it. Always for, racial. Sure. <laughs> for sure. Dude, this has been awesome. Uh, we appreciate the time. I know you're probably exhausted. Go back to sleep. Sudafed, all that good stuff. That's the plan. Good luck, best of the Appreciate way. Appreciate you, AR. Appreciate <laughs> you. Yeah, have a good one.